This is to clean up one little thing about uh, emergence of the U.S. as a world power, the origins of American imperialism that I somehow skipped over and left out, wasn't looking at my own piece of paper, shouldn't take too long. It has to do with the question of Darwinism, Charles Darwin, uh, a Church of England clergyman actually, who went on a five-year round-the-world cruise in the 1830s or 40s, somewhere along there, observed different forms of plant and animal life around the world and thought deeply about it and uh, published a book in 1859, I think, entitled the On the Origin of Species. And that was the birth of what's called Darwinism. He picked up some ideas that were already being kicked around at the time. And um, after some initial resistance from the scientific community, who saw no evidence in the fossil record, uh, Darwin's theories of evolution, natural selection, uh, the gradual uh, process whereby plant and animal species uh, would differentiate from a common source and um, the strong would survive, the better adapted would survive, the weak would perish, all like that. That was not only accepted, it was swallowed whole and became the basis of philosophical thought among <clears throat> a certain population and remains so today. Well, so it's, it's all the rage in the last third or so of the 19th century. So my question here is, may surprise you, uh, how did Darwinism make racism seem modern and scientific? Well, it did. Um, racism wasn't something people thought about. That word, the word racism is used today. It, I think it probably means different things to different people. I suspect that the common understanding of racism would be, it would characterize people who the first thing they think of when they wake up in the morning is race hate, and the last thing they think of before they drift off asleep at night is race hate, is seething, angry, boiling hatred of people who have different demographic descriptors. There, the number of people like that, I suppose, are not zero. Uh, it's, it's an attitude, okay? As much as anything, it's an attitude, and um, in the current political maelstrom, one thing that I fear is that since it has come to be that along with one or two other things, uh, symbolic of ultimate absolute evil, that racists are so ultimately absolutely evil that it would be uh, outrageous to suggest that they might have any redeeming characteristics at all. When what that does is set it up where people, members of the public, maybe even enough to do it, would agree, and I'm off the subject here, but I can't resist, that regulating and potentially criminalizing people's attitudes is a legitimate function of the state. We can't let that happen, okay? Because if they can criminalize that big, fat, slow-moving target, then the fence is down. They can criminalize almost any attitude they want to criminalize, as they do in certain countries like communist China, which is so much admired by people on the political left in our country. But here's the thing. Let's say you're an American in the 1870s or 80s or 90s, or West European either, and you observe that, that your country has all the modern stuff. It's got cities, it's got railroads, it's got steel mills, it's got uh, universities, it's got high culture and the true religion. While, meanwhile, there are people in other parts of the world who don't look like you do, who are still living in very primitive conditions. Well, Darwin just explained to you, and I'm not taking this position myself, I'm just telling you, Darwin has explained to you why that is you are more highly evolved than these other folks still living in prim primitive conditions. You are superior to them. So, uh, and you maybe even pat yourself on the back for being a kind-hearted and good person because you want to uplift, there's a word you heard a lot, these lesser peoples. Not everyone wanted to do that. The social Darwinists 
use Darwin to explain why some people are rich and some people are poor. The rich, they believed, were um, genetically superior. They were uh, more aggressive, they're more intelligent, and that enables them to become rich. Poor people are genetically recessive or deficient. They're less intelligent and less uh, aggressive. Now, here's the thing. Social Darwinists believed very strongly that helping the poor and feeding the hungry were completely wrong-headed because that interferes with the process, the evolutionary process, which is what has uh, enabled us to rise from being pond slime to the being the glorious creatures we see when we look in the mirror. You must not interfere with that. That would slow down the process. If we were to continue to evolve to higher and higher forms, then lesser peoples, and while we're at it, lesser nations must be allowed or even encouraged to perish. Hence, Darwin at first blush gave racist ideas, which were already pretty, you know, they're endemic. They're not like some people want to make them out to be, but they're there. It's, let me say assumptions. It gave them the patina of, uh, of science. Let's go with the science. You've heard that before. So thus did Darwinism make racism seem modern and scientific and totally, totally unhumanitarian. So consider this just something I tagged on to the end.